Hi everyone. I hope you all are doing well, staying safe, staying healthy. I just want to thank you for your patience in this transition from face-to-face -face classes to online. Um, I know it's really awkward. Um, to be honest, it's really weird for me. Um, I really enjoy our face-to-face -face engagement and all our discussions and our debates and simulations. Um, actually, I'm kind of nervous to be doing these, so hopefully uh, just bear with me through the first couple lectures here. Um, you know, so for the next month, we're going to talk about um, state and local power in their handling of this uh, pandemic, of course, uh, COVID-19. Um, so we're going to look at the various aspects of state and local power during this time. Uh, we're going to look at, um, first of all, what the states have done in the last two weeks, which is fairly unprecedented. Um, we're also going to look at the business world's response to state and local power. We're going to look at the kind of contention and power between the various state and local governments, particularly from more liberal states um, and more predominantly urban areas versus the federal government. Um, so we'll look at the conflict between New York, New York's governor, Andrew Cuomo, and President Trump. Um, we'll look at the conflict uh, between the uh, northern, uh, northern and, and on the whole, northern and western governors, how they're handling this conflict. And we'll look in comparison to how the southern and more Midwestern states are handling this whole pandemic. Um, and we'll look at kind of the tensions uh, that's coming out of there. Um, so uh, th this will hopefully be interesting for you guys. I figure um, between now and the end of the semester, um, we'll just use the entire pandemic and the government's response as a, uh, you know, as a case study for the whole semester. So, so you know, what has been done uh, in response to the crisis by state and local governments is absolutely unprecedented. Uh, I don't think we've seen anything like this since Lyndon Johnson's administration, where state and local governments have assumed this much power. Of course, in the 60s, um, states played a major role in um, uh, implementing uh, Lyndon Johnson's Great Society, in quotes, uh, program, which sort of like dealt with block grants and um, expansion of welfare benefits and unemployment. Um, that all happened under Johnson, and the states had a prominent role in implementing that. So perhaps since the first time, since the six, late, you know, mid to late 60s, um, we're seeing states and local governments really assuming substantial power. Um, and you could argue that in this entire pandemic, um, state and local governments were actually kind of like thrust or forced into power due to the perception that President Trump didn't really assert um, strong leadership. Let's just put it that way, right? Strong leadership from the get-go. Um, so we ended up with a situation where um, the states felt obligated, particularly in more liberal states like New York and California and Massachusetts, which have been really hard hit by this. Colorado would be an example. Washington state, more liberal states have really taken the lead in, um, you know, in a coordinated response to this. Um, now, to be fair, of course, one of the reasons why some of the conservative states haven't responded in the way we're about to get to in a second, how the liberal states have done, um, is because they don't believe that COVID-19 is as big a crisis as it's being made out to be. Uh, particularly many of the Southern governors, um, the governor of Alabama, Mississippi, North Carolina, governor in Tennessee, um, they all kind of argue that this crisis was sort of manufactured by the uh, mainstream media, CNN, uh, MSNBC, um, 
uh, New York Times, Washington Post, etc., Time Magazine. This is actually more propaganda than anything. This is maybe slightly worse than the flu, but they blew this up to be much bigger than it is. So therefore, the Southern governors and, and Midwestern governors are kind of saying this isn't this isn't really something that we should be acting on at the risk of bringing down the economy, right? So that's a common theme you hear. You know, liberals talking, saying we need to really worry more about the virus, less about the economic impact right now. And then the conservatives saying we have to worry more about the economy, you know, downplaying more the virus, the impact of it. So um, what have the liberal states done? You know, their state powers is really unprecedented. Uh, everything from um, uh, closing down uh, uh, bars, closing down restaurants. Uh, obviously, we have a screen now between us, which, uh, you know, was, of course, came from executive order. Uh, Jared Paulus, governor of Colorado, ordered, right, all of the college systems to be closed down, you know, the any public uh, colleges. Um, so, you know, um, social distancing guidelines were established. California put their entire state, uh, Governor Newsom from California put the entire state on lockdown, right? And, you know, many have said that was a very effective response. You know, he's acting quickly. Others say it's kind of totalitarian, frankly. It's, it's a authoritarian power that maybe government should never have in the first place to be able to lock down its entire citizenry. So, you know, um, you know, th this has been un unprecedented. And um, again, you have so many different perspectives on this. Uh, uh, again, as state and local governments assert more and more power as a way to deal with the pandemic, which have uh, has claimed over, I think, 5,000, right, American lives so far, um, which is about the number of people who were killed in the Iraq war, right, uh, U.S. soldiers. So it's not completely, um, it's not to say it's, it's certainly not inconsequential, right? So, um, you know, I guess what I'm, what I'm curious about is what your guys' thoughts are. You know, are the state and local governments acting um, in your in your sense, uh, responsibly, um, this is an unprecedented wielding of power by state governments. Is this effective? Do you think the social distancing, the closing down of of major public gatherings and schools and bars and restaurants, is this uh, effective? Is this good policy? Um, are there consequences of the state and local governments uh, asserting this kind of power? Um, and then, you know, uh, what are your thoughts about all that? Um, uh, you know, one concern, uh, that I have, and I'm just curious to know what you guys think, and I'm sure I'll post this as a discussion question. You know, there was an old quote by, um, uh, Albert J. Nock. He was an old kind of like libertarian thinker, uh, back in the 1930s and 40s. And he said, any power you give to the government to do something for you, you give it the equivalent uh, power to do something against you or to you. He's basically saying, even if we need, like the government convinces us that we need their protection during these kind of times, like this pandemic, he's saying there's a real big threat that comes when we give it that kind of power is that it'll never relinquish that power when the crisis passes. It'll increase its power. Um, so, you know, I know when I was thinking about this whole crisis, I was like, you know, the states and local governments obviously had to do something. They can't, they have to protect the most vulnerable about us, um, our elderly, people with compromised immune systems. Um, we need to protect people, clearly. Um, but that also needs to be balanced with, you know, not giving government way too much power than they probably should have. And it's kind of ironic that we've always looked to the state and local governments to keep us from a federal government that becomes tyrannical. But what happens if the state and local governments become tyrants themselves and start abusing their power in much the same way that the federal government does? Who, 
who stands between the states and the local governments and the people? Well, the obvious answer is it's up to us to keep our governments honest uh, and not abusing their power. So I'm just curious, you know, what, you know, do you think this needed to happen with the state and local governments? What are the ramifications, consequences of giving government this much power? Uh, we'll, we'll be getting into all these questions um, in, in lectures ahead. Um, so I'll get you guys a second lecture in a couple days here for sure.